Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As a bigger example of how to design databases and how to normalize, I thought I would take you through this famous website. And of course, they are quite a big business, so you probably know what they do already. Let's see. Everybody knows that they sell absolutely everything online. They also sell the software technology and here are some figures from at the time of recording from a year ago. How about you update them? Go to places like alexa.com, similarweb.com, which give things like statistics on how often a website is visited, how often a website is searched for. An interesting story about Amazon is they were the first to trade online and they were also the first ever company to earn more money than they lost. It's a big company and a big business, so we're not going to work all that out. Uh, we're going to focus on their historical business, the book sales, all that applies to sales of anything else. Uh, so things like selling a product, but also the reviewing, the recommendations. Uh, and we'll look a little bit at how the advertising can work. And you might think, we, we don't know. We don't know how it works. We, we haven't got information. Yes, we do, because We've got a website, of course. We've got public information that Amazon lets out. And we've got quite a bit of experience as a customer of, a play of something like Amazon. And also, since this is reverse engineering, if you ever wanted to build a competitor business, are you going to knock at the door of the original owner and ask them politely to let you know? Obviously not. A quick view, a web database application kind of has two parts called the back end and the front end. When the website has to change, it makes queries to the database, which sends back all of this data. So we have access to the front end and we're going to use that to work out the back end. I'll start off with something that makes our work easier. I know about invoicing books because it's exactly the same as, say, sweet shops. Maybe things like details of entity names, occasional attributes that are in the data might change. But the structure is going to be the same. We've got items for sale and customers who want to buy them. And there's a couple of tables here in between. The customer, when they make an order, raise an invoice. Each invoice is for one customer. There's the foreign key linking back to the customer's email. Here I'm assuming that because each email is unique, it's the best way to identify each customer. If you think its customer should have a number, an ID or something like that, that would be a good idea too. And each customer can raise many invoices, but each invoice is for just one customer. Therefore, the foreign key is at the many end of the relationship. That looks like the kind of uh, classic things that we always do. An invoice, of course, is for the items that are being sold. But wait, each item can appear in many invoices because I can sell the same book, another copy of the same book, many times. Each invoice could contain many items, so the relationship between those two is many to many. We need something in, be in between. This is the invoice. Each invoice has got multiple lines, multiple items. That resolves our many-to-many -many relationship. The many's are on the inside edge. Check each invoice item is one invoice. Each line is one invoice item. It appears in one invoice and it is about one item, one product. Right, there we are. We have the core of how our system is going to work and a starting point that we're going to be able to use to fit everything else around. Amazon has a tendency to take systems that already exist and they add little things to it to, to use it in a new way. So for example, they had the very clever idea of an organizing one-click order. They even patented it which uh, is a bit cheeky as a patent. He, it made the news at the time for asking whether really there should have been a patent for this sort of thing. 
but a patent is public information so if we go to US patent number 5960411 that just trips off the tongue doesn't it we get information about what there is on the database server this idea of the connection between server and client so there's web pages ready made and there's something they call a customer database which is really the customer table an order database an order table the inventory and all of that kind of information and that gives us some idea about how they are organizing their systems if I want to buy with one click then I guess I need to hold a little bit more information but the structure we have here is still working and I can also track orders. I know that as a customer, I can find out my old orders. So I'll just include a dispatched date uh, and work out things like this sort of delivery estimate and so on. Although when I look at my order tracking, I see that each order made on a specific date can be broken up into several deliveries each time at maybe separate addresses and separate dates and here I've written down that each invoice is for one customer with an address so I acted as if one invoice meant one delivery so I've got something here that is more complicated than my structure I need to rethink that so what we're going to do get a precise idea how they work by normalizing this source, this form. Let's see, here's the form in big and to the side I'm going to write down the unnormalized form of this data. I can see that there are all the details here at the top that are for the whole order, so I'll copy them to the side order number, the date it was placed, the order total, this red stuff here is a delivery and there's another one but you know deliveries and here's all of the delivery attributes delivery number the date dispatched how many packages one package okay the name address uh, some options like super saver delivery uh, and where's all that data there's more Ah, there's the rest, the subtotal of items, postage, VAT, and all of that sort of things. And then there's all of this stuff. Okay, I guess it goes in the same group, in the same in the same zone. Although there's some difficult work. Let's remove anything that gets calculated, because I don't need the database to store this data. So things like the order total, the subtotal, the VAT, all of this can get worked out. The delivery total that can get worked out with some rules about you know if there are x kilograms of uh, stuff to send then it's going to cost this much this sort of thing but it doesn't need to be stored in the database because it's a derived attribute and we've got left one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13 attributes to work through for each order all of this stuff is a repeating group because there's one order multiple deliveries inside a delivery there are several items so one order has got multiple deliveries a repeating group and one delivery has got multiple items delivered in green a second repeating group inside the first if that sounds complicated I will we'll show an alternative there's our repeating groups identified now that we know this we're going to be able to proceed through the normalization work We've got in green that repeating group in a repeated group we know it's going to be uncomfortable we can work through it rules for first normal form separate the header from the repeating group whoop there's two from the repeating groups header in black repeating group in red repeat the key of the header in the repeating group as a foreign key we have a compound key what's about the green one 
repeating group within the repeating group repeating that repeating group the key of its header to link back this green data to the red data and the red data links back to the black data those two order number plus delivery number match those two so the foreign key is from here from the pair to the pair we call that a compound foreign key in the second normal form we're going to look out for compound keys that was easy there isn't a compound key so there's no problem with compound keys not here anyway right, how about this one order number plus delivery number every one of the things that are here are about this delivery of this order there isn't anything that requires just order number or else just a delivery number so that was an easy job and finally how about this one some of these things do not require the whole compound key this is a compound key with three attributes forming the key so it would be nice to be able to break it up let's see the item price does not depend on which order it is it's the same price every time we sell this item so the item price only depends on the items name but the number ordered depends on which order it is so the number ordered is about the orders line while the item price and sold by which is who sells it depend on the item only the item and so on the items name we'll finish with the third normal form but before we do that I'll go back to that repeating group in a repeating group which sounds uncomfortable and show you an alternative way of looking at the same thing we can actually do without mental gymnastic we'll do as if all of this was one repeating group so you know the order has got multiple deliveries which have multiple items it's my repeating group all the data is a header everything else is a repeating group and so needs the order number to be repeated as a foreign key all of this data needs the item and the delivery number in, as well as the order number as a primary key there's the green part item name and price and, and so on so there's our repeating group put apart only here we have a compound key made of not two but three separate attributes where do we go now well in the second normal form we look out for problems with compound keys here where your compound keys are triple you can expect problems with compound keys inevitably uh, that complicated compound key with that large number of attributes there's going to be some interesting things to find but first of all all the number there's no compound key here so there's no problem with the compound key so that stays the same all of these things all the way to postage depend on the order number and delivery number but not on the item and so they go apart from the item and all of what was the green ones before right, some of it requires all three the number ordered is the number of items ordered in this order and so it depends on the order number and delivery number and finally the item name is the determinant is the primary key for item price and who sells it we have arrived in a different way at the same result as before so if you are finding the idea of those uh, repeating groups inside a repeating group a rather confusing one it's actually not necessary only here our primary key was made of a fairly big compound and we have a fairly big number of attributes inside the same table 
which can always be a little confusing to try and disentangle. Here it is disentangled in one, two, three separate tables. Third normal form, we look out for anything that currently is not at all the primary key but could be. So unlikely to happen here or here or here where there are few attributes anyway. But we'd better watch out with this one. And with this one, there are things to look at for with the delivery address. For a delivery name, people have a delivery address. Like that, it makes it possible to actually choose between delivery addresses. You know, that's something that Amazon does very nicely. And finally, this table does not change because among the non-key attributes, there's only non-number ordered. It's not going to be the key of something new from this table. Same applies to item names or item prices sold by. So that does not change compound foreign key leading to compound key is still there as before and these two do not change there's our result obtained in either two different ways but both are right now from there we'll look at the set of tables that we get from here let's see one two three four five tables oh I didn't do one last check which is to know how many attributes we have and check it's the same attributes and the same number of attributes as before. How many attributes have we got here? One, two. I've already counted this one because I've counted all the number already. So skip three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Delivery name I've already counted. So not this one. Nine. Counted, counted, counted. 10. Oh, I said I had counted this one, but uh, I hadn't. Then 11, 12, 13. 13 attributes like before. So that's encouraging. And one way of checking that I haven't made a mistake. Right, there's an order table with its order number. Here to draw them big, I will draw order number, which is the primary key of the table, but haven't drawn order date, which is another attribute. And I do the same with the other ones. I draw only the primary keys and foreign keys because they are important, but not the rest. So delivery, each delivery, its primary key, it's order number, delivery number. The, the order number links back to the order table. So an order has got multiple deliveries. A delivery contains multiple items ordered. Items ordered, it's this table. And each order item is from one order delivered through one delivery. So links back to one of these. There's a compound foreign key that is the pair linking back to the pair. And a, a typical structure that we see with, that we've seen elsewhere already where each order has got multiple deliveries. Each delivery has got multiple items that we call a hierarchical key structure. A delivery is to a destination. There's the destination stored to have the delivery name and the delivery address. And finally, my order item contains items, of course. There's the items. And each item could be sold or could have multiple copies sold in separate order items. Now I'll go back to my pre-existing thing where I had drawn four tables and I wanted to track the order and I had said that we weren't sure. And now we're going to work this new information back in this structure that we knew wasn't quite right. What we've got that we didn't have before is that we've got this new delivery table See, we had the items already. We had customer information already, order, order item. Many of these things, the things we found out through the normalization, match the structure we had before. It's just that the order is broken up into multiple deliveries. That's the new information that has changed how we view this. 
Right, the delivery is where we store things like the delivery name, options, postage, all of that, uh, all of that sort of things. The delivery name will be the way that we track back the address. We'll see that in a sec. Each delivery is for one order, and each delivery contains multiple items delivered. I can put the date dispatched here. That tells me when the delivery has happened. And finally, I have these delivery names and delivery address that I can link back to my customer here. So each customer has got multiple possible delivery addresses that I'll put here in my destination table. And now I have a, a kind of merge of the information that I obtained thanks to the normalization and information I knew from knowing how an ordering system needs to work. Compound key, there's another compound foreign key. So the customer email and delivery name point to customer email and delivery name. I can do all sorts of things with all of this data. Uh, I can check expedition op option details, I can actually organize group by, we can do personalized recommendations, things like, you know, customers who bought the same as you also bought, or customers who searched for this, this item also bought, these are the things. And all of the data to be able to do this kind of recommendations is, is in here. The things we haven't got are things like the inside of view of how Amazon might work. Uh, you know, knowing about employee activity, organizing cancellations, organizing the detail of expeditions, all of those sorts of things. It would take someone who works at Amazon to actually inform us to be able to complete this kind of information. Okay, we got quite far. How about the reviewing of books or other items for sale. So I've got my inventory and there are customers who buy things, but as well as buy things, they review things. Now, a customer can review a lot of things. Something can be reviewed by a lot of customers. It's a many to many relationship. There's the review. When a customer is reading a review, so a customer can write a many review and a review is written by just one customer. But when a customer reads a review, they can actually put little stars to say whether they find that review helpful or not, or put a thumbs up to say whether they find that review helpful or not. A customer can rate, not write, rate many reviews, and a review can be rated by many customers. That relationship will be many to many. There it is. Don't get confused between those two. That is the customer writes a review and that one is the customer rates the review. Okay, let's assemble everything we've got so far. There's the customer and the items that they can buy. The customer's got multiple addresses stored and when they order, we put a link from the order to the customer an order contains multiple deliveries, two addresses. Each delivery has got multiple items that we can link to the order or link to the delivery that links to the order. In fact, this relationship isn't absolutely necessary, but it's made possible by this data since we've got the order number here. And finally, each order item is one item from the inventory. Where's the reviewing? There. The, an item in the inventory can be reviewed by the customer and a review can be rated. There's the rating. How many tables have we got? Four at the bottom, four at the top. Eight. Eight tables, but we only worked it out two or three tables at a time. We started from a bunch of four tables that are a typical pattern for sales. And then from there, we added one table, or maybe added two tables. Finally, last thing we'll do about how Amazon can work, is we'll look at how Amazon's affiliate program uh, works for uh, websites that would want to make money advertising Amazon products. Or that screenshot is from an 
all the way that Amazon organized it and might have changed a little. The general technique about what kind of data needs to be stored and what needs to be tracked and so on has not changed that much. A customer to advertise has to have a website. They would register with a website uh, as, a, as a customer that is affiliated. So a customer that has this possibility of advertising. When they do, an ad can show on the page, which shows something from the inventory. Uh, the ad then becomes quite specific. You know, it's made uh, on the site of a customer. It will have a number. It might have a, we know which uh, size it has and so on. And when we've decided on an ad, then the machine makes an ad display. And that is the ad is showing on the page at a specific date. It might show more than once, so an ad will have multiple displays, but the display is the display of one ad. And if an ad is display, then maybe the visitor who is looking at it is clicking, or not. What happens when they click? Maybe they buy something. So let's see, a click links to a sale. And here, links to a sale means linked to an invoice, or rather no one line of an invoice about one item. Each display could lead to just one sale, because when the ad is displayed, you know, either they click and then they buy or not. So one display, one sale. Or the other way around, each invoice item could be the result of having clicked on one advert. It could be the result of having seen many adverts, but there's no possibility of tracking that because we're not yet spying on every neuron firing when someone is actually online and we're not able to track where their eyeballs go all the time. So we only know the one ad that they clicked on. The relationship between those two is a one-to-one -one relationship, optional at both ends. I mean, the invoice item, the item being sold, could have been from an ad, but might not. The ad could lead to a sale, but might not. So this is a relationship that is one-to-one, -one, but possibly not at both ends. We'll try a foreign key at a sensible end of this. So when an invoice item line appears. If the sale is the result of an advert, we will indicate it here by putting the ad number and the date it was displayed. There. This is the primary key of this. So this is the foreign key that links to this as a primary key that will show the link, if there is one, between these two tables. If there isn't a link between these two tables, it's simple. We'll keep this information null. Let's see it all together. The customer can buy things that appear in the inventory. When they buy something, it appears as an invoice item. It gets delivered through a delivery at a customer's address, which links back to the customer. And it gets invoiced through this invoice that links back to the customer. Customers can also write reviews and rate reviews. So there's the reviewing information. And finally, if a customer is affiliated, then they get ads that could display on their web pages. And when an ad is displayed, the ad could lead to a sale. And there's the link. That is everything that we will do in this work with Amazon. There's quite a lot of work in here, isn't it? We've used a, a whole range of techniques. I hope you found this one clear because of its scale. I think there is something powerful to knowing that the kind of techniques that we can actually study and practice at a small scale actually work for big businesses. Thank you. Bye-bye.